How can we balance writing flexible, readable code with the optimization needs of modern-day accelerators? Find out in this talk about the JAX Python library. Hi, I'm Robert, a software engineer at Google. And I'm Yu Fang, a developer advocate at Google. Today, we want to talk about JAX, a flexible and fast open source numerical computing library from Google DeepMind that allows you to iterate on your research ideas quickly while still executing very fast on accelerators. We'll start by giving a brief introduction to JAX and some of its core features and functionality that will get you started and productive, and then dive into more details around how to scale your code to large data sets and more compute resources. Out of the box, JAX offers a familiar NumPy-like API, good for scientific computing and machine learning. Here we have an example with two functions. The predict function is representative of what you might see in a multilayer perceptron model, sometimes abbreviated as MLP, doing dot products of the weight matrices and adding biases before putting it through a tanh activation function. The loss function compares the output values from the predict function with the target output values. In this case, we're computing the sum of the square differences between predicted and target values. We could additionally divide by batch size if we wanted to compute mean squared error. These two functions combine to give us a nice collection of operations to work with and demonstrate some of the core capabilities of JAX. Originally written in NumPy, we gain a speedup simply by changing our import to use JAX.NumPy instead of NumPy alone. But wait, there's more. JAX has several additional useful features and functions that we'll talk about next. These are presented in the form of function transformations. Let's explore this example further. The first function transformation we'll look at is the grad transformation. It takes any function as input and transforms it into one that computes the gradients of your function. It does this using automatic differentiation, sometimes called autodiff, a crucial tool for machine learning and optimization tasks. JAX makes it easy to transform any function into its gradient function. Simply wrap the function in grad, and right away, you'll have a new function for computing the gradient. In our example, we've wrapped the loss function with grad, and so this will enable us to compute the gradients of our loss function, which is the key to figuring out how to adjust the weights of our model in such a manner as to lower the error. Another function transform that takes care of a common task is vmap. VMAP makes it easy to turn a function that was written for one element into a function that works for many elements, sometimes called vectorization or batching. VMAP does this without using a for loop, but instead transforms the array and matrix dimensions of each calculation to account for the batched inputs. Now, you could write that yourself, or you can wrap it in VMAP and move on with your life. In our example, we've vectorized the function that computes the gradients of our loss function using vmap, allowing it to compute the gradients of multiple batches all at once. And I should mention that this works for any function, not just NumPy functions. We said JAX makes your code run fast. How does it do this? Well, JAX can perform just-in-time compilation, or JIT, to create optimized code that can run super fast. Compilation offers a host of advantages. It cuts down on latency and lets you utilize your hardware more efficiently automatically. Compilation eliminates unused outputs and unnecessary recomputations, so you don't have to worry about manually rewriting your code. It can combine or fuse operations, and it manages their organization, maximizing hardware utilization ultimately leading to faster function execution. Finally, you can compile the automatic differentiation operations too and get an optimized backwards pass. That's a nice list of features, but how do we actually use JIT? Well, if you're starting to catch on to the pattern, we're going to wrap what we've done so far with JIT. So it'll be the JIT of the VMAP of the grad of the loss. JIT also has a bonus feature, parallelization. It supports both automatic and manual splitting of computation across many devices and hosts, letting you scale horizontally by parallelizing your workloads. 
In this fully automatic mode, all you need to do is specify how to split the input and the output of your data. Now, the topic of parallelization is quite large, and there are many ways to split up your workloads. JAX provides a unified approach to parallelization through JIT, but also provides you additional tools if you want partial or fully manual control. You get to specify how you'd like to parallelize and scale your data and your model. Let's explore all of that next. Well, the topic of optimal scaling is a complex one. JAX makes scaling as easy as possible with a unified API. Let's talk more about how parallelization works in JAX. I should mention that the approach is the same no matter what kind of hardware you're running on, CPU, GPU, or TPU, or what scale, single device, single host, or thousands of chips. It's all the same transform, JAX JIT. Write your code with a global view of the program, and the shapes stay the same no matter whether you're on a single device, or on end devices. JAX figures out how to split things up, but you program by computing on the full-sized array shapes. The API is portable and works on any backend, old and new, thanks to the world-class compiler XLA from the OpenXLA project at Google, which stands for Accelerated Linear Algebra. XLA is a big part of how JAX achieves such incredible compute performance on TPUs and GPUs. We're big fans. Importantly, the API is scalable going from one device to 10 or even to 10,000. All it takes is using JIT. In the case of a neural network, we can write a splitting specification for parameters and let JIT handle parallelizing computation. It's a single abstraction for data parallelism, tensor parallelism, and pipeline parallelism. In this diagram, we see an example of how both operations and parameters can be spread across two chips. We don't need to manually handle specifying the data splitting or parallelization of intermediate computations, as the compiler already knows what to do. So how do you get started with JAX? If you're excited to try out JAX and check out the ecosystem, head over to jax.dev to get started. There are a number of great user guides and tutorials, as well as advanced guides for specific established and new computational techniques with JAX implementations, as well as things to watch out for to help you on your journey. Something we haven't mentioned yet is that JAX is actually just the lean core of a whole ecosystem of libraries. There are many libraries which have built additional functionality on top of JAX, so you don't have to implement every feature yourself. As the frontier of research evolves, this ecosystem of tools and libraries will evolve with it. This allows the core library of JAX to stay compact and well-tested, and enable the ecosystem of libraries to more rapidly experiment, evolve, and adjust based on new research and the needs of the community. Most of these libraries focus on specific tasks and can be used in concert with one another. For example, NNX is a neural network library written in JAX, and Optax is an optimizer library that works with it. Grain can be used to load your data in, and Orbax can be used to manage your machine learning model checkpoints. There are many tools in the ecosystem with some recommendations featured at jax.dev, but also discoverable through community lists of awesome JAX projects. So far in this first half of the talk, we've introduced some JAX basics and talked about how you might get started. From the NumPy API to its modern scientific computing features of automatic differentiation, batching, and compilation, JAX offers a robust set of tools to easily write highly performant code that can run on any hardware. We really want to emphasize this portability. With support for both older and future hardware, the scalable unified parallel API makes JAX fundamentally compatible with parallel computing, using the same abstractions for one chip as 10,000 chips. In recent years, JAX has really found itself at the forefront of research and scientific computing. With its stable core library and composable function transformations, it has served as a foundation for an ever-evolving ecosystem of libraries built on top of JAX. But Robert, what if you're somebody who needs even more performance and customization? Well, JAX still has you covered. In the second part of the talk, we'll explore some of JAX's additional features, giving you various levels of manual control. JAX has really great out-of-the-box performance, but if you want, you can have full control. This means custom control going all the way from high-level abstractions down to assembly-level machine code. 
Of course, there are trade-offs in flexibility as you move along this curve, but these customizations are really what allows for high-performance compute in all cases, especially for novel computing applications. Let's talk about a subset of these features, ShardMap and the Palace kernel language. They sit at two different levels of abstraction, letting you customize high-performance accelerated numerical computing. Earlier, we focused on a global view of your program. ShardMap gives you a per-device view. You can start thinking about what is happening on each device and control communication across the devices explicitly. The example code shown here executes a collective matrix multiply, first computing and then communicating the result across the chips. This is what tensor parallelism in a linear layer of a transformer might look like. This case is quite common. It lets you train a large model by distributing it up across chips, but also splits up computation work for faster execution. You don't have to use ShardMap to do this. The JIT compiler can specify this computation and communication for you. But with ShardMap, you can control exactly which of the various possible parallel strategies your computation uses. ShardMap gives you a lot of manual control. But in the spirit of JAX, it still supports composable function transformations like auto differentiation. Typically, we only use ShardMap for parts of a program that need to be carefully controlled. But if you prefer, you could put all your computations inside a single shard map and use the explicit collectives exposed in JAX LAX for all communication. JAX LAX contains a lot of lower level primitives for operations not expressed in NumPy. No one really knows what the L in LAX stands for, but it might be for a low level. Shard map allows you to write low level code to implement some very interesting specialty features. Some example applications include parallelized mixture of expert layers compute communication overlap matrix multiplies written directly in JAX, and using JAX for efficient communication in custom distributed scientific computations. So what if someone wants to go even lower? Can we go lower level? Is such a thing even possible? Yes, we can go lower. The next step are kernel languages, which give you quite a low level control over hardware. They are operating close to hardware level, but are still programmed through Python. It's low-level control with fast development iteration, great for AI and computational research. Let's get a better idea of how they work. Kernel languages offer direct low-level computation and memory control. A popular kernel language is Triton, and JAX fully supports it through the JAX Triton package. Google DeepMind has also created a kernel language of its own for high-performance computational research called Palace, which targets both GPUs and TPUs, it has a common core with some specialized backend features for each hardware backend. The idea behind Palace is to provide both the common low-level control that kernel languages offer, but also add manual control over the memory pipeline. This allows you to achieve fully state-of-the-art performance without writing machine code directly. The distinguishing feature of Palace is the explicit memory pipeline control. You specify in what order the hardware should load data into memory, through the block spec abstraction to fully utilize memory bandwidth and not waste compute cycles. By allowing the user to define this explicitly rather than letting the compiler take its best guess, a lot of performance can be gained, especially on newer hardware. I don't know, Robert. Low-level optimizations are often quite challenging to write. While it may seem difficult to write low-level code, Palace syntax is actually quite similar to NumPy, although only a subset of operations is supported. Like JAX, Palace is also traced, so metaprogramming is fully supported. It can do operation fusion, batching, but not automatic differentiation. For that, you have to provide explicit differentiation rules to JAX. The idea is to give you as much control as possible with minimal boilerplate and overhead. We want the code to be quick to write and run fast. Let's take a brief look at what calling your Palace code might look like. In general, we want to run your Palace kernel code on small slices of data from your accelerator's memory. The JAX code shown below is creating a kernel call by combining the kernel function and the manual data pipeline. Being explicit about the pipeline lets the hardware run as fast as possible. Palace targets GPUs and TPUs through its own compiler called Mosaic. Mosaic can compile your Palace program to GPU or TPU. Alternatively, you can use JAX Triton to compile your Palace kernel through Triton too. OK, Robert, Palace definitely seems like a very impressive piece of technology. But in practice, what is Palace for? 
Can you share some examples of what people are doing with Palace? That's a good point. You might still be a bit skeptical about the purpose of custom kernels. Well, here are some examples of open source Palace kernels that exist today. These are important building blocks of some of the state-of-the-art models. Rewriting these operations in Palace, you can customize the computation to your exact setup or quickly develop building block operations that don't have an efficient implementation today. And when you do, consider open sourcing it so that others can benefit from your work. We've given you a little view into some of the more advanced features of JAX and shown you how extensible it is. And the escape hatches that JAX provides at every level of abstraction, with several levels of manual control, from explicit parallelism hints with JIT to Shardmap, and even kernel languages like Palace giving you control of the memory pipeline for modern accelerator chips. Truly a superpower. So give JAX a try and let us know what you think. Visit jax.dev to get all the latest info. And if you have more questions, feel free to open a discussion on GitHub. That's all for now. Thanks so much for watching, and we hope you enjoy the rest of Google I.O. Thank you.